Hi folks, my name is Aaron Powell and I'm a Principal Cloud Advocate here at Microsoft. In this video, we're going to do some improvements to our application that we had last time and the way that it works with the file system and file system paths. Picking up from where we completed the last video, we're going to fix some potential issues that we have. Right now, we're expecting the application to be run at node.index.js. So running from the same directory that the index.js file is. But if we're not running node from the same folder, we'd have an unexpected result because either we'd not find the stores folder where we think it would be, or we might find the wrong stores folder. You can test this for yourself. So let's jump over to our terminal and I'm going to navigate into the stores folder. And then we'll run the index.js with node, but from dot dot slash. So we'll tell it to walk up and find that file. Now, if we try and run our application, we'll see that there's an error message that's going to pop up. And that's because, well, it can't find stores from the current working directory. It's expecting it to be relative to where index.js is, but we're not where index.js is, so it's relative to the current working directory. Thankfully, Node gives us an easy way to work through this with a variable called double underscore dir name. So this is the directory of the file that has been executed, not the current working directory. So we can append that onto the start of our find sales files, and then also append the uh, slash so that we can execute this. We clear our terminal and run it again. There we go. Now we've got full file system paths completely from the root of our file system, not worrying about relative paths. But we do have another potential issue that we've introduced. We're using a slash in a certain direct direction, which is valid on some operating systems, but other operating systems might use a different direction slash or a different path separator altogether. So we're going to need to make sure that we normalize this to work across all operating systems because Node supports multiple operating systems. And to do that, we're going to use the path module. So first off, let's import path into our application. We'll do that by const path equals require path. We'll import that module from the, the Node.js uh, runtime. And then this gives us a new method uh, that we will want to use here called join. Join will take the multiple paths that we've provided to it, or the path segments more accurately, and it will apply the correct operating system path separator. So I can remove the slash direction that I had in there, and that will get inserted by path.join. No more hard-coded file path separators. There's still a few more places though within our application that we're doing this that we might want to go and update. So if we come down into find sales files, You'll see that there's a few locations around here that we're just going to update with path.join. And that will then correct all the normalization that we had. And now if we run our application, it'll still output exactly the way that we were expecting it to. Lastly, we're expecting that the file name we're looking for is called sales.json. But what happens if one store accidentally calls it maybe sale totals instead? Well, we're not going to pick up that file because we're explicitly looking for a file name. Instead, we just really care that it is a JSON file and that's what's being uploaded because that's what we're going to unpack. Again, we can use path for this. We're going to use the path.ext name to then get the extension of that path and then test it against .json, which is the path extension there. And if it matches, so we ignore the, the name side of it, if we just match on the path, well, then we get the output that we're expecting. Now let's come in and actually rename one of those files just to make sure it is still picked up. So we'll change this to sale file, oh sorry, sale totals. Yep, that'll do. And then we're gonna execute again. And now we'll see that the third one there has been updated. This has made our application a little bit more robust when it comes to working across multiple operating systems. Join me next time where we're going to have a look at how we can take our application and start creating files and folders on disk so that we can ultimately begin writing out our report. Bye for now.